Alice Perrow, the most famous lady detective of the 21st century, was born in the United Kingdom in the 1960s. Since then, she has been to many countries, including Portugal, Singapore and Australia, and has lived in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, as well as on the equator. She has never been to the Philippines or the United States, but she speaks English, French and Portuguese. Like Sherlock Holmes, the Sherlock Holmes, the famous detective, she plays the violin and sometimes practices up to five times a day. She is also the only person in the world to have performed Tchaikovsky's 1812 overture in one breath on the recorder. She has been a detective for 30 years and claims that although many people think that being a detective is a piece of cake, detectives generally work very hard and it's not all fun and games. A detective is someone who solves mysteries and the people who contact Ms. Perot have some very unusual problems. Little information is available about some of the cases she has solved, but a few of her most famous cases have attracted worldwide attention. And she has been offered up to $1,000 an hour to help solve mysteries such as the case of an Australian owl in a uniform. The bird laid an egg in a European nest in less than an hour after its arrival. What a strange problem! With great modesty, she has either declined such a fee or donated the money to the poor or to the Grammar Survival Fund, believing that the detective should use their skills for the common good. We are being held hostage. You cannot write English without us. Please send one million dollars to Grammar Survival Fund and we will be free. One million dollars. This is very strange. This letter has no articles in it. A million dollars. Win, one million dollars, quiz show, invitation. And now, it's time for the world's best game show with your favourite host, Oscar Cicada. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a... Uh, uh... yeah. Yes, you're right. Thanks a million. Your preferred show. <gasps> please, please, I need to win a million dollars. A million Here's dollars? Here's my invitation. Can you help me? Uh I need a million dollars to save English grammar. Um, should we give it a chance? Yes! You say English grammar? Yes, uh, English grammar. I have a Colombian grammar. I don't have an English grammar. No, 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 not a grandmother. Grammar, articles. Oh, yes, articles, okay, like magazines. No, 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 the words a and the. You can't speak English without them. Should we give it a chance? Yes! Can you tell me your name, please? My name is Miss Parrot. Miss Parrot, like the bird. No, 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 not, not parrot. P-A-R-R-O-T, oh, yes, oh, but it's pronounced oh. Parrot. The T is silent. Parrot. OK, Miss Parrot, do you think you can win $1 million? I hope so, and I hope that the group here will help me too. OK. Now, before we start, I wonder if I could just have a little quick recap on the use of articles in English. Please. Be my guest. Well, first of all, we need to think whether the noun is countable or uncountable. A countable noun is one which can be made plural. For example, case, cases, child, children. An uncountable noun cannot be made plural. For example, fun, information. If you have a singular countable noun, it must have an article with it. It can't be on its own. If you have a singular countable noun, the question to ask, is it definite? If it is definite, it takes the word the. If it is not definite, it takes the word a. If you have a plural or uncountable noun, again, is it definite? Yes, it takes the. No, it takes no article. Now, if I could just have a quick recap from my memoirs. These are some words that we've uh, looked at before. 
Um, so just a quick recap on when we use the word the. If the speaker and the hearer share knowledge about the noun, for example, ordinals and superlatives, the most famous lady detective of the 21st century. Some countries, the plural countries and the United countries. So the United Kingdom, the Philippines. Decades, for example, the 1960s. The Northern Hemisphere, the equator. Instruments that people play. She plays the violin. Unique adjectives, the only, the same. Emphasis, for example, the Sherlock Holmes, not another one, the famous detective. And shared knowledge, the famous detective, whose name is recognized by everybody. Then we also have relative clauses, the people who contact Miss Perot, the cases she has solved. Specific and followed by of, the case of. A noun associated with a previous noun. An owl, the bird, we know which one we're talking about. Adjectives used as nouns, the poor, the common good. Plural nouns preceded by of, some of the cases. Many organizations, the Grammar Survival Fund, my favorite organization. Representatives of a class, the detective should use their skills. Now we use a or an for singular countable nouns only. The first time you mention many singular countable nouns, for example, an owl, a detective. We also use a for rates, five times a day, or $1,000 an hour. For jobs, she has been a detective for 30 years. Parts of a whole, a piece of cake. Positive, few or little, a few. Exclamations, what a strange problem, and such a, such a fee. Now we also have to consider whether it's a or an. So remember that we use a before a consonant sound, even if that letter is a vowel. So a European, a strange problem, a detective. And we use an before a vowel sound, an Australian, an egg, an hour, even though the letter h is actually a consonant, it's a vowel sound in this case, so an hour, an owl. And we do not use an article in these cases. Languages, English, French, Portuguese. Plural nouns preceded by many or some. So many people, some unusual problems. I hope you're paying attention, young man. Yeah, yes, yeah, thank yeah. you. Indefinite plurals, uh, detectives generally, games, mysteries. Indefinite, uncountable nouns. Fun, attention, modesty. Negative, little or few little information. This one is a bit tricky. We had the positive and the negative. It's a bit like seeing whether your glass is half full or half empty. In this case, it's half empty, little information, not very much. And plural nouns preceded by numbers, 30 years. So thank you. Thank you for giving me the chance to just recap on those. And I think I'm ready to play the game. Okay. The question is very simple. It's for $100. Is this correct? I read a book book was exciting. You have four different options. Pick the right one and you get $100. Right, well, let's just look at this one. First answer A, I read a book, book was exciting. B, no, I read a book, the book was exciting. C, no, I read book, book was exciting, no. D, no, I read a book, a book was exciting. Well, no, that's definitely wrong. Um, now, I read a book, and we know which book, the book that I've just read. So I read a book, the book was exciting. I think the answer here is B. B. Oh, Miss Farrow, you are doing terrific. Let's move on to the second question. Complete this sentence, Earth is planet. Then again, you have four different options, and you have to choose the right one so that you get $500. Right. Now, in this case, it's got a small letter E for Earth. So we know we're not talking about the name Earth, as in Venus, Mars, Earth. So we're going to need an article. And planet is also a singular countable noun. It needs an article. So let's look at the choices. The Earth is planet. No. B, the Earth is a planet. Sounds good. Earth is a planet still with a small letter E. I don't think it's that one. An Earth is the planet. No, it's not any Earth. It's the Earth. It's very specific. So I think, again, 
I think the answer is B. Now, is this one where we should perhaps ask for a little bit of advice? Should we perhaps ask the group here? Well, do you want to help her? Yes! All right. So, please, suggest your answer. There you go, Miss Parrow. You have some options here. Thank you very much. Well, I think B. B. So you trust them? Yes. Let's have a look at the answer. Miss Parrow! Miss Parrow, $1,000. I need a million dollars. OK, please. million dollars. Focus a million dollars. OK, Miss Parrow, for $1,000. Are the articles in this sentence correct? The cake I bought today was the only chocolate cake there. You have four different options. You get the right one and you get $1,000. Well, let's just look at the options. Yes, it's correct. The cake I bought today was the only chocolate cake there. B, no, cake I bought today. No, no, no. This, in this case, cake is a singular countable noun. It's a particular cake and only chocolate cake. No, no, that's not right. The cake I bought today was uh, only. No, we couldn't have uh and then only. And D, no, cakes I bought today was the only chocolate. No, we've got a singular and a plural mix up there. That doesn't work. So A, the cake I bought today. Yes, I know which cake. The one I bought today was the only unique adjective, the only chocolate cake there. I'm sure it's A. A. Are you completely sure? Yes, yes. What about B, C, and D? No, no, B. A. It's A. Well, let's have a look at the answer. Wow, Miss Parrow! <laughs> you are doing terrific! Now, for $4,000, let's have a look at the question. Is this sentence correct? She plays violin for the homeless. Then again, Miss Parrow, you have four different options and you have to choose the right one. Well, let's see. A, yes, it's correct. She plays violin. No, when we play an instrument, it's the. She plays the violin for the homeless. Uh, so I don't think it, it could be A. Uh, now, B, she plays the violin for the homeless. That sounds fairly correct. C, no, she plays violins for homeless. No, because homeless uh, is an adjective used as a noun. I think it needs an article. And no, D, she plays violin for homeless. Well, I'm fairly sure which is the right answer, but perhaps in this case we could ask the group again. Okay. Show your answer, please. We have many answers here. A, B, C, D. Is your call, Miss Parrow? You decide which one is the right answer. I am sure that the correct answer is B, as I think many of the group agreed with me. Yes? So you go with B. Let's have a look at the answer. One second, Miss Parrow. Perfect. Okay, for $8,000, Miss Parrow. What two words are missing in this sentence? Australian dollar is currently stronger than Euro. Again, you have four different options. You have to pick the right one. Now, with currencies, we usually take the word the. So I would expect two the's in this sentence. So it can't be A, the a, uh, it can't be B, a, uh, a. Uh. C, an, an, no, that doesn't sound right. D, the, the. I am pretty sure the correct answer is D. The Australian dollar is currently stronger than the euro. Are you completely sure? Yes. Don't want to change it? No, 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 I think it's D. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. Yes, Miss Barrow, you are doing great. Come on, come on. That's right. You are doing terrific. Okay. 16,000. What two words are missing in this sentence? I went to bakery. Cakes were delicious. Hmm, I like cakes. So, what's your answer? You have four options. Well, I like cakes too. Oh, good. So, I know that many bakeries make cakes, so we would associate cakes with a bakery. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we wouldn't have, I went to a bakery, cakes were delicious. We know which cakes, the ones from the bakery. Bakery is a singular countable noun, so it must have an article. Now, we can't say B, I went to a bakery, a cakes, because cakes is plural. I went to an bakery. No, no, it starts with a consonant. D, I went to a bakery, the cakes were delicious. I think the answer is D. D. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. 
Come on, she's doing it again. Miss Power, you are impressing me. 32,000. 32,000. Is this sentence grammatically correct? They earn $80 the hour. Hmm. What do you think, Miss Paro? Four options. Well, this one is a little bit more tricky. This is a rate. Usually, with rates, we take the word a or am. So let's look at the options. They earn $80 hour. No, there's no article there. They earn $80 an hour. That sounds very possible. They earn $80 a hour. Mm -hmm. They earn $80 the hour. Well, do I have the choice to perhaps eliminate a couple of the answers here? Well, I think I'm going to give you a chance. You look a little bit confused. As we say, confuso. Yes. So we're going to eliminate two of the answers. Right. Oh, you have A and B. Hmm. Then, in this case, I am certain it's B. They earn $80 an hour. It has to have that article in it for the rate. You go with B? Yes. Let's have a look at the answer. <laughs> She's done it! Oh, Miss Paro, Miss Paro, Miss Paro, you are going to break my business. Oh, 64,000. 64,000. Is this sentence grammatically correct? Would you like piece of cake. You have four different options. Please pick the right one. Well, again, piece is a singular countable noun. It's part of a whole. Mm -hmm. So I would be looking for a piece of cake. Would you like a piece of cake? Would you like a piece of a cake? Would you like a piece of cake? Would you like a piece of cake? Let us see. D, would you like a pieces? No, we couldn't have that. I am sure the answer is C. The sentence is not correct. It should be, would you like a piece of cake? Which is A, B, or C or D? I'm sure it's C. OK, Miss Paro, you go with C. Let's have a look at the answer. <laughs> amazing, amazing. You might get the $1 million. I hope so. OK, this is 100000 is this sentence grammatically correct? And university is the interesting place to study. Four options, Sparrow, four options. Well, in this case, the word university starts with a consonant sound. So we can't have the word an. Hmm. So let me see, letter A, an university is a uh, interesting. No, interesting starts with a vowel sound. So we need an. Now, if we said, a, that would be wrong. If we said B, a university is an interesting place to study, that sounds fairly good. C, an university is the interesting place to study. Well, I'm not too sure about that one. We've still got that an university. And D, a university is the interesting place to study. That would imply that it was the only interesting place to study. And in fact, it's only one of many interesting places. So I think the answer is B, but I think I might like to just confirm that with the group. Sounds like a good idea, Miss Paro. And um, please, suggest your answer. All right, Miss Paro, we have some nice options here. A bit confusing, some B, D, C. Okay, Miss Paro? Yes, I think we all agree, mostly. Uh, and I hope by the end of this session you'll get them all right or every time. Uh, but I think that the answer is B. A university is an interesting place to study. Let's have a look at the answer, please. <laughs> Miss Paro, once again, you've done it. All right, Miss Paro, for 132,000. Well, that's a lot of money. But still, it's not one million dollars. But we are getting there. 132,000. Is this sentence grammatically correct? 1970s were the best years of the 20th century. Four well, options. Well, this is a decade, the 1970s, so it should have the article the. Okay. The best, that bit is correct because it's a superlative. And the 20th century, an ordinal number. So let's have a look at the options. Option A, 1970. No, 1970, that's wrong. B, 
the 1970s were the best years of the 20th century. We'll come back to that one. C, it's correct. No, no, it's not correct. D, no, the 1970s were the best years of 20th century. No, it's missing an article. The answer has to be B, the 1970s were the best years of the 20th century. It's letter B again. Letter B, you say. Well, Miss Parrow, let's have a look at the answer, please. <laughs> Miss Parrow, once again, Miss Parrow, Miss Parrow, Miss Parrow, you are doing just terrific. Let's move on to the next question. Two hundred and fifty thousand. Is this sentence grammatically correct? Some of people in this room don't like quiz shows. Four options, Miss Parrow. <clears throat> well, this is one of those rather tricky ones. Uh, we've got the choice A, it can only be some of the people. Well, it's true, it can be some of the people in this room. That would be all right. Uh, B, it can only be some people. Well, that is true, it can be some people, but it's not the only option. Some of people, no, that's not right. Some people or some of the people. Well. I am pretty sure of my answer, but you know, in this case, I think I might like to ask one of my friends. Is your friend here? No, I will have to telephone. Oh, cool. Excellent. Okay, you can call your friend. Thank you. Hello, Carolina? Hello, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. I have a question to ask you. Mm -hmm. Is this sentence grammatically correct? Some of people in this room don't like quiz shows. I think it's not correct. I think you can say some of the people in this room or you can say some people in this room, but you can't say some of people. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye. So, your friend has given you an answer. Hmm, what was the answer? Uh, I agree with my friend. It's letter D. Some people D. or some of the people are both correct. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's have a look at the answer. Miss Paro, oh, terrific. You are just doing terrific. You are getting very close to $1 million. Yes. Look at this one, 500,000. Is this sentence grammatically correct? France, the United Kingdom, Portugal, and the Netherlands are all in Europe. You have four choices. Get the right one, and you are very close to the $1 million. Thank you. Now, this is the question of articles before countries. Some countries take articles, some countries don't. You know, this is quite a complicated one. In this case, I think this might be a good opportunity to ask a professor. Oh, we have that option. We can call an expert, a person who really knows about these topics. So, please, let's do so. Let's call the expert. Um, hello, Professor Graymarian. Oh, hello. It's good to hear from you again. I wonder if you could help me answer a question, please. Oh, I'd be happy, very happy to help you. Uh, is this sentence grammatically correct? France, the United Kingdom, Portugal and the Netherlands are all in Europe. Oh, now let me think. Uh, well, France, yes, that's fine. United Kingdom has the, because the word united. Portugal stands alone. Netherlands is plural, so it takes a the. So I would very definitely say yes. The answer is yes, it's correct. Thank you. And I would actually stake my reputation upon it. Yes, I agree with Professor Graham Arian. It is correct, the answer is C. So, let's have a look at the right answer. Yeah, yeah, you are doing just perfect. Great. Can we have a look at the next question? Do you see a number there? Can you tell me what the number is? One million dollars. That's what you came for. One million dollars. Now, for one million dollars. Miss Parrow, correct this sentence as necessary. The library is a place where you find books. You have four different options. Get the right answer, and you go with one million dollars. Well, I really need one million dollars. So let's hope we get this right. Yes. Now, this question here is one of definitions. 
And definitions are a little bit unusual in that usually you can take either a or the and it is correct. So option A, both are possible. A or the library is a place where you find books. We'll come back to that one. I think that might be the right one. B, only the is possible. The library is the place where you find books. Mm, it's not the only place. You could find books in a bookshop. So we can't say the place. Only a is possible. A library is a place where you find books. Well, that is possible, yes. Um, but I think there is another option. D, neither is possible. Libraries are places where you find books. Well, that sentence is correct. But neither is possible. That's not true. Now, both are in fact possible. A library is a place where you find books. A library, any library. One representative library, any library. Or the library is a place where you find books. The library is a sort of abstract concept of a library. The library is a place where you find books. So I am sure that the correct answer is A. Both are possible. Here we go with the right answer. Farrell, and please give a big applause because <laughs> Miss Farrell, a million dollars. What would you do with this money? Well, as I said when I came in, we need one million dollars to ransom English grammar, and now I have it. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks so much. <laughs>